Phoenix Heaven Garage. My name is Steve. I got my cousin Mike with me today, and we're gonna do our annual update on the Hummer. What Mike's done to it, take a review of it, and uh, take it for a spin. So, Mike, what's new and exciting with the Hummer? Well, as you can see, we added some rust to the hinges. Yeah. So that'll be something we're addressing uh, near future. Also, you know, winters in New York are terrible on everything. Yeah. So you've been driving. You were through the, the last winter. We it had is as my well. winter beater. Yeah. Um, downfall, which Steve's going to help me out with, is uh, the rear brake's locked up. It's uh, obviously we discussed in the past, yep. uses a parking brake. Um, some idiot that was driving it parked <laughs> it after it's been in the salt with the e-brake locked. Oh, that's not good. So we, we had to use some persuasive um, adjustments underneath there with a hammer to get everything <laughs> loosened up. So we're going to have to actually pull everything apart, clean up all the Yeah, edges. we can take care of that. Um, so is it still drivable like that? Still drivable now. Um, yeah, I got it loosened up enough to drive it around because I had to move it, and obviously didn't want to move. So right now, if you hit the brakes, that 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 one isn't going to. It still operate. works, but the pads are definitely worn down because I had to make one pass down the street, and yeah, it was just bustling yeah. smoke out of the back. So, <laughs> pretty interesting. Um, so I think you did a lot of interior work. You were saying. Well, we started. We, yeah, uh, I was. I have great family that was nice enough to buy me more comfortable seats. Wow! Look at these. All right, now. Are these off the shelf? He's out of a vehicle? They are straight they're, they're from Amazon. <laughs> um, so I don't know the brand. Not so there. downfall to the seats. One of the problems that we ran into is the height. The old seat, the bottom was here. And now the new seat, you're here. So your leg room to this box, which we're probably going to have to change out, is tight. But we do have room to recline a lot yeah. more than that vertical wow. seat that we had yeah. last time. Uh, it was a bit really uncomfortable riding this before. You can see on the driver's side over here, the bar behind the seat. That's what Mike was talking about. The other seats were lower, and that bar prevented the back from going from reclining, really. So, yeah, definitely it's it's a little bit tighter getting in because you have the heavy bolsters mm -hmm. on both sides. So when you get in, it's almost like doing the Lambo kit. Yep. Um, step in, duck, get in. <laughs> but, but when you're in, it's so much more comfortable. Yeah, um, I bet. Uh, yeah, I have a bad back after years of doing all the stupid stuff that I do with cars. And that seat, I can actually sit in there for hours and not have an issue. Yeah, it, it's a, it's, it is a rough ride in this thing. It's uh, fun, though, but... That one actually reclines, I think, a little bit farther. Uh, the seats here, Mike, how did you go about installing these? Okay, okay, so this, this is my rigging, basically. Um, I knew I was going to mount it here. I wanted to use the original brackets for the floor. So I grabbed angle iron, and I just made this plate, and the lower plate over here was where I started, those two beams. I just went across. Then, of course, with the seat kit, they give you these tracks. So I took that and we put more angle iron on that and uh, bolted those directly. Oh yeah, right here. I see it. So, you know, the idea was to make it so you could still take it out if you needed to. Um, I wasn't expecting that when I put this angle iron to this seat and I dropped it in there to start feeling out where it was already at the perfect height. So for the driver's side, this was just absolutely not the way I thought things were going to go. It's usually way more struggling. Yeah, right. Um, I threw a 4x4 on top of that bracket and that set me at the perfect height. So I just made a couple of brackets going up. We welded it. On as many places oh, yeah. as I could, yep. and uh, yeah, she's she's solid. We are gonna do a couple more braces across here. the The game plan is to come straight back like this, so this way there's no chance if I get in an accident of that thing collapsing or moving. Which, realistically, with that front brace, it won't happen anyways. Mm -hmm. But um, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, right. I'm a big fan of just adding more. One of the options we were thinking of doing was, did you, did you daily drive this in the winter? I did every day. Wow. Every day. <laughs> um, so some of the stuff we're doing is we had these floor mats from my kid's gym. Yep. Um, so we're putting those in. It does help out with some of the sound deadening. Um, and we previously have a video of here of Mike we, where he rhino lined this or as a rhino liner knockoff actually. Yeah. The brand. But we got a whole video up there. You can check that out too. Uh, or we did this. Check the description for that as well. But that helped a little bit with the sound deadening too. Right. Just and actually, squeaking more than anything. With probably. with the with the cold. Um, obviously in the winter time this thing's an ice box. We did have to do a couple yes. things with the thermostat, new hoses. I blew a radiator hose at that point. We did a new thermostat, uh, new coolant cap. We still have a leak on the heater core. We haven't done that yet. We'll yeah. have to address that. But um, you still had heat with the leaky heater core. Yeah, wow. yeah. You just got to keep topping it off. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big coolant system. Yeah. So um, it did help when you're in the back seat that your feet weren't freezing from the cold snow and everything blowing up on right. the bottom. Uh, front still has some issues with that. Obviously, there's a lot of holes that we could caulk up and, and clean, but. I like the fact that the water drains out still. What'd you do for the the rear uh, valance in the in the winter? Did you just have a so, drape down the back of it? No, I have a, a metal panel. So this is the lower half. I actually split it in two legs. So that wasn't here when last time I was here. This panel wasn't here. Right. We had the um. Well, there was one video we had where I had the entire panel down. We were using the camera for backup and all that. Oh yeah, well, yeah. You're, you're right. You're right. You're so right. So I cut that panel in half. Uh, the idea is to put another J channel or an L channel. I should say for that panel. Mm -hmm. So I remove it in the summertime and then put it in. So I use the vinyl one in the summer. 
and uh, it just a it's got a back window so you can see through it. Right. And it lets keep some of the mosquitoes it gets out. It's hot. Oh this yeah. Truck. This I mean, is the, the engine is literally right there. <laughs> it, it just bezels heats off that center. Um, we did have a problem with the 24 volt to 12 volt converter. That's so that's the blue box. You replace that. That's what the blue box is. Yeah, there? I started off with a. Let's go take a look at that. We won't say which one it was, but it was a very cost effective brand nine dollar one. Yep. Um, and then in my brilliance, I never put a breaker in there. So when that fried, it took out my batteries. So now we've upgraded this. The, the plan is to enclose all this, but we ended up putting this one in, and then we have a, a 50 amp breaker now right next to it. So hopefully we avoid that same problem and killing you know six hundred dollars yeah. in batteries. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it's slight overlook on my. Yeah, it's a nice part. it's a nice heating unit for the the Hummer. If what it is, uh, it actually blows the heat out through the he's got a pipe in through the the, the, the dash oh and channel air duct there. I guess I'll call it. Yeah. So and and we did fix that too. There was a this. Remember we had to flick that by yes, hand? Yes, yes. I just tack welded that back together. So now I can actually get both sides to defrost. Oh, that's good. And he comes out of here all controlled by the dash now, plus the sink kicking in. Those actually blow right on these side windows, which help defrost that. These aren't the stock rims, correct? No, we got these aftermarket, um, along with the tires. So it's the, a good match the Brattle King you did, too. You met, yeah, you that was pure luck. Pure luck. <laughs> um, really what it came down to was the stock tires are $1,000 per tire just for the tires Jeez. and balancing the rims almost impossible. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, what, so what machine is going to be able to accommodate that? We've got these aluminum ones and the, the cool part about shot. it is because there's no brake dust there. They're not rotting out right away because yeah. it's two years. I don't wash this thing um, and they're not pitting. So that, that was great. We didn't have that uh, galvanic corrosion. You know what I mean? The, I've had the similar cars, metals. Yeah. So, but I've got, instead of spending four grand on tires that I couldn't balance out, we've got the rim tire packages for Twenty-four hundred dollars for all four wheels and tires. And it came mounted and balanced. Mounted That's and balanced. That's the way to do it. That's so, the way to do it. Yeah. So we yeah. actually, I scored huge on these. Uh, we did go from a thirty-six inch to a thirty-seven inch, and when we did that, it got me an extra five miles an hour on the top end. And <laughs> I think I went from five miles to the gallon to six. So does this have a speedometer? I think it does. It does. It does. It, it's so uh, now it's, it's just a little off. It's a floating. It just bounces. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, like an old, but, like an old thing out of the sixties. Yeah. If you're if you just pin it at sixty five, which is almost wide open on this thing, you'll keep up with traffic and, and it moves. Jeez. I wish I'm I, gas. Um, it's it's expensive. Eight, eight dollars a gallon. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, was, eight miles to the gallon. I, I was about to say when I was driving in the wintertime. I think it was, I think we were at $4 a gallon at that point. Oh my gosh. We're close to it. This is diesel, right? But uh, yeah, so it was Diesel's about, expensive. Enough. If you don't know, I don't know what year you're watching this or if it's recent, diesel right now, I think it's over $6, right? It is. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but we were we were averaging anywhere between $85 and $110 a week. To do. Uh, Mike, what is this? It's camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a problem. Oh. The original horn didn't work so well. Um, it's mounted low and of course the salt and everything corroded it. So we added this. That's an air horn. <laughs> yeah, we added the air horn. I, I did it so we could undo it at the door. So when I take the doors off in the summertime, I don't have to just going to Oh, that's smart. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, kept it like a Jeep thing. Yeah. You, you understand. Yep. And, uh, so we have a little. <laughs> just, just, just enough to, to save scare high. the old ladies in the drive through in the morning. And the perfect part is because most of the cars are lowered now. Um, the horn is conveniently <laughs> right at, at window ear. level. Yeah, it's conveniently <laughs> at window level, just in case they didn't hear me coming. I think we, we talked about this before. I love screens. Obviously, when they made these aftermarket doors, they used camper windows. Yes. So that was their thing. So on the driver's side window, I need coffee. So that one doesn't have a screen, but all the other ones we left in. So you can actually open these up while you're camping there and keep airflow without the bugs. Yes, that's that's very important. I just did that to my porch, actually. I just closed my porch <laughs> for the same reason. Wow. But yeah, let's... uh. Let's go for a spin. I'm gonna attempt to get in now. Okay, I'll, I'll come, I'm gonna let you know how it is after I get in. <laughs> so I'm in. I got in pretty good. I got. Uh, uh, it's not too cramped, Mike. I'm not. I'm not at all worried. Uh, all the metal in here is still just. Watch yourself. Abusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Mike added a, a key start to this as well. I think we showed that in the last video. Yep. Uh, we do have a bearing going out on our generator. generator. So that's something we're going to have to adjust. Um, again, with the heat. Oh, yeah, let me show that. So, so here's yeah. Mike's heat setup here. So this one is operated. We did the aftermarket. This comes in, you get a good blow off both sides. Yeah. I can't use all the plumbing things. Eventually, when we make the center console, we're going to have it so there's twist style vents on each one of them. Yeah. So you, we'll have two blowing backwards, two blowing towards my feet, and then the other two were originally for the windshield. 
Um, I don't know how we're going to duck them just yet, but this will be flying across. All you'll see is the fans. Um, that's the game plan for that one. But these are blowing out. That comes blowing up, right? Yeah, they suck air in yeah, here and, and they blow out the sides. Side. So essentially, it's just a heater core yeah. that someone boxed in. So that was kind of neat. Um, for the mains, you've got this. Oh, I feel it. Yeah, over here now. You pull one off and now we come up with those. Yeah. So that's extremely helpful for the winter. And like, I was trying to keep everything localized here. You've got your winter wiper motors, you've got your switches. So the idea was keep that. I wanted to put the cup holders over on the side just to make it a little more. I mean, this one's nice, but you can't bolt your coffee, so if you hit a bump, it ends up dumping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, found that out. I was like, wow, it's really warm in the truck. When you build that up, when you build a console here, just put some cup holders right here, some deep ones, you know? Yeah, that was the thought. So, like I said, I want to keep this flat, so we're going to do that. Um, the thought was I have a lot of aluminum that I bought. Yeah. Uh, we'll end up cutting it out of aluminum. The cool part is all this stuff can be bought at like boat stores, yeah. camper accessories, it's all... Run of the mill stuff? Yeah, that's the stuff. good part about custom or experimental is there's no rules. You just do what you feel like and if it works out, awesome. If it doesn't, you don't tell anybody about it. And right. Again. <laughs> so. so these seats are awesome. This is a lot, 100% more comfortable than it was before. Especially the driver's side. I bet, yeah. I'm reclined. I can leave good. Back now. I got plenty of foot, feet, uh, footwell space. My knees aren't that close here. So yeah, I think this was a big, big improvement. Upgrade. Yeah. I did lose my uh, Dollar General uh, 99 cent interior lamp. I was very upset over that. <laughs> the batteries went dead and it just never came back to life. And up we go. <laughs> Even at 20 miles an hour, you know, it's, it just feels more comfortable. Oh, look at all the pretty cars. Yeah, it's terrible these guys park their cars like that. <laughs> right turn, Glenn. Again, the inside's a lot quieter than it used to be. Yeah, it is. Even with the back end yep. on. How fast are we going? Uh, looks like we're just closing by 50. Yeah, you see it. The white needle bombs are pretty funny. We eventually want to get that thing packed up to around here, which would give us about 65, 70, maybe a little bit more. My son said he had me at 80. Um, 80? Like, you know, I haven't driven this thing in like three months, so. I'm trying to talk to Mike, you see I'm talking really loud in here. Yeah, if I keep it on the road, that'd be good. I don't think we heard what he said, but yeah, he said something. I haven't driven in this so long. I like to do a shakedown. Yeah. Go fast, slow down, see the vibrations. So it doesn't vibrate a lot. It's just really loud. And maybe the seats are dampening it, but it's a lot smoother now with these in here for sure. <laughs> if you can see that loud, that would be perfect. Yeah, at highway speed? Yep. Yeah, not bad for cruising around town, for what it is. Oh, it gets looks. The best is when you're driving it. I think I said before in the other videos, the other people will move over to the, the other side of the road to, to give you a wide berthing range. It's, it's funny because, like, again, it's just a meter. And we go by car shows and people are trying to wave me in. And it's just like, it's, it's my truck. You know? <laughs> it's, it's a grocery meter that costs a lot of money to get back and forth. Um, there, there are a lot of guys converting them to daily drivers, where they're using the four-speed turbos, or like I said, the upgrade to the new Duramax. Uh, makes them a lot more powerful, a lot more fun to drive. Is a three-speed? Yeah. One of the downfalls. But the transmission's bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> That's a must-have. Yeah, it is a must-have. <laughs> they have power steering? Yeah. Got hydraulic steering and hydraulic brakes. The only thing I didn't think to do, which I should have, is when I was messing with all the belts, I really should have put in a 12 volt system with a 12 volt alternator going right to it, like a self excited one. And then I could have ran everything 12 volts off of there and it would have been dead instead of doing it with the converter. All right, yeah, I think we have to do with all this. Everything. Yeah, again, you leave so much stuff to chance when you have wires running everywhere. I could have made a completely separate system that would have been, you know, self sustained. 
especially like in the winter time, like I said, you get snow and it is powdery snow, you can just dig it with this thing and just non stop and just yeah. go. Cool. You got me again. And that bleeding, it, it's the thing every time it gets me. So we hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please give a thumbs up if you did. And take care, everyone.